Shortly after the 2003 Terminator Cobras came out, I was in high school. I really wanted one. I would look at them on eBay. I would look at them anywhere I could find them for sale. And I wanted a Torch Red Cobra. I had decided way back then that I wanted one. There was one in town that was uh, an 03 with chrome wheels. And I really wanted it, but I knew it was going to be long gone in the future. And so I always wondered to myself, where is my red 03 Cobra right now? I would wonder, what garage is it in? Who has it? It's out there somewhere, and somebody has it. I didn't know at the time, but now I do know, that that Cobra was sitting in Laguna Hills, California. It was parked on a checkerboard floor, and it had specialized California plates on it. I did not know that this car was a 10th anniversary car, but we do know that now. So looking back on it, I always wondered what garage is my car in and where is it? So these pictures of my Cobra in someone else's garage are worth a lot to me. You can see here he has a 2013 Coyote. And the interesting thing about this Coyote was he told me that it had been wrecked like six times and that his Cobra had been sitting in the garage all the time safe and he had daily driven that Coyote but it had got hit like six times so to me I think that's incredible so the guy who I bought the car from bought the car in 2005 I believe it was just a couple years old when he got it it had like 5,000 miles on it very low mileage this car was a non-dealer prep car. It was picked up from the first owner, kept in the plastic, uh, very well taken care of car. And it had a few owners since the first owner. And he ended up with it. And he's the one who put most of the miles on it. He did some modifications to it, all those kind of things. Had it dyno tuned. But anyway, um, the car did sit at his parents' house a lot. So this is his parents' house. That's the garage where it would stay a lot. And there's a white C7 Corvette in there that it would be next to and he always has pictures of his mom with that car on his Instagram and stuff so I think that's the car she drives but anyway here is my car uh, parked at the parents house so it did reside in this garage for a long time as well so I really like these pictures to start out the video with the garage pictures of this car before it was mine so the car was in California and I had just been looking at 10th anniversary Cobras for sale and I had one that I was set to buy and it was in Fresno, California. It had roughly the same mileage. It was a 10th anniversary. It had some big black wheels on it, like some 20 inch wheels on it. It had a big Whipple supercharger. It had the engine rebuilt. It had a T56 Magnum the killer chiller uh, it had a whole lot of stuff done it had like everything you'd ever want to do to the car but it did make me a little bit nervous being that it was a rebuilt engine and someone else had just done it in their garage um, and it had some stripes on the bottom of it that I wasn't really happy with but I think they were vinyl I could have just taken them off but anyway it was a car that I was set to buy I was willing to pay uh, good money for that car it had a lot of money into it and I set it up with the guy to buy it. He had it on eBay for like $30,000 and it never sold. And so then he had it on a Facebook marketplace in California and that's where I came across it. And so I agreed on a price with him and I was going to come get it the day after Christmas. I, was, I had time off of work and I had the cash ready to go and I was just going to drive out to California and I was actually going to have to rent a U-Haul probably or a trailer for my Tahoe to tow at home because the car was on E85 and there's no E85 around here so I was going to have to trailer at home and get it dyno tuned and there was going to be some work involved with this car. So the guy had messaged me the day after Christmas and told me, sorry man I sold the car yesterday which I think is baloney because it was Christmas day nobody's going to buy a car on Christmas day. I don't know if he had a friend or someone who would pay more or what happened with that but that's alright so that car was gone I didn't end up buying it 
I was looking around some more and a couple days later this Cobra popped up for sale on SVT Performance and I agreed to buy it six hours after the listing was created. I really wanted this car. Unlike the other one, this one had the original 10th anniversary wheels, it had the stock engine built by SVT, it was the same mileage but it looked like it was in a lot better shape, it had the SVT floor mats, all sorts of good stuff on it. So I called the guy and I talked to him and we uh, talked all about the car and I told him I'm serious I have the money in hand I'm ready to come by the car I just want to make sure that it checks out everything you know it's a lot of money to be spending on a car especially since I already have an orange one I already had yeah, the bullet Mach 1's I have a lot of cars and spending that kind of money on yet another car just for fun is kind of a big deal um, some people might not think that it is for me but buying an expensive car is still something I have to consider and Anyway, I, I talked to him. I was working with my friend that day, washing and waxing RVs. It was really kind of hectic, and um, I just decided I wanted to get the car, and I, I told the guy I'd commit to come buy it. I'll go right now, and I'll uh, reserve a hotel room and everything, and, and so I did, and I have to hand it to my wife. She's really good about that. Even though she doesn't always agree with me going out and buying cars and things, we we talk it over, we decide how it's going to work out, and she's really good about finding a good hotel and getting the kids packed, you know, getting everything ready. And on this trip, I decided I wanted to take my family. Usually, I just take a friend or my brother and we go get a car. You know, we've gone to Phoenix and done that a couple times, done it all in one day. But this time I thought, you know, I really want to take my family. I want to try to make this a big, fun experience. This is probably the last Terminator I'm going to buy. Maybe. <laughs> but, you know, this might be the last one I get. And every time I buy one, it seems like it's always some big jumble and, you know, pleading with my wife to get it. And, you know, please, please. And then finally I, I get the car. But it's it was a lot of work and stress involved. This time I said, look. I have the money in hand, I want to go buy the car, I want to make this a trip, I want to make this a really fun, memorable experience for me and the family, I'm going to bring the kids this time. So we loaded up the Tahoe, we loaded up the kids, we got them all packed, and I even uh, really wanted to bring my mom with me, um, because she could help with the kids on the trip as well, and she grew up in Los Angeles, she grew up... Um, in Southern California and knew all these areas where we were going to be going and I thought it would be a real fun experience to take her with us and uh, you know maybe she could watch the kids while my wife and I went from the hotel to get the car the next morning or however it was going to work and so um, we decided to make a really fun trip out of it and we did so we started off uh, down the road and next thing you know here's Las Vegas I've spent a lot of time in Las Vegas, mostly at the racetrack, so I don't really get this deep into Vegas, um, so it's fun to go through and see all the big buildings, and this is a place where a lot of people go to, you know, they travel from all over the world to see this place, so it's a fun place to pass through, and I was really nervous at this point. Like I said, it's not always just an easy thing to go throw down some money and buy a car. I was hoping that it's all going to work out right. I have the whole family with me. You know, there's a lot of things that can happen on this trip. Um, but I wanted to have a good time, and I was excited, but I was also pretty nervous at this point. And traveling through Vegas was actually kind of fun because I went down there to get my blue bullet, the black bullet, um, Danny Johnson's yellow Cobra. My blue Mach 1 was shipped brand new to Team Ford in Las Vegas, and I bought it in Boulder City right outside of Las Vegas. We met a guy from California in Las Vegas to get my cousin's Black Bullet, number 140. You know, I've been down there a lot to get cars, and so it's fun to go through Vegas and revisit all those feelings of cars and fun. And so now, after Vegas, we made it to Prim, Nevada. And Prim is a really interesting little town. There's some casinos there, there's shopping, there's a mall. But it's really kind of on the outskirts of town. It's miles between Vegas and anything else. There's just desert between the two. It's a beautiful little town. It's bright colored. It's, you know, attractive. Of course, they try to get you there because of the casinos and everything, but it's a fun little town. And back when I was a little kid, we came to this town. 
we went to this casino called Buffalo Bills, and it has a roller coaster there, but it has like a water log ride more on the inside of the building with laser guns and things. And I did that with my family when we were younger, and so Prim's kind of familiar to me. I went shopping with my wife there when we were dating. I let her drive my 97 V6 Mustang from in and out in Vegas to Prim, so it was kind of a memorable time. Um, so Prim was a fun place. But the traffic was terrible. It was bumper to bumper on I-15, the freeway, just a crawl all the way through Prim. And we thought, you know, we should probably just get off here, get something to eat. It's going to be a long night. You know, my wife was a good sport of having the kids ready. You know, my baby was less than a year old and the other two boys were in there with us. And we thought, let's get them something to eat and let's try to enjoy the trip a little bit more. And so we went into this Taco Bell. I really like Taco Bell. My wife does too. Our whole family enjoys eating there. And I stood there in line. It was a really long line. And of course, I was still nervous. I'm buying the car and spending a lot of money and everything. And I just felt really grateful. I thought, I'm so grateful that I'm able to stop and come into this nice warm place and buy warm food for my family and enjoy a nice trip with them and go do something that's incredible. Uh, you know, buying a, a Terminator Cobra is probably one of the coolest things I've ever done uh, as far as cars go. I just love the experience and I just felt grateful. I, I was grateful to be able to pay for the food and have the money saved up and I thought to myself, you know, you deserve this. You work really, really hard. I've worked extremely hard in my life, worked two jobs a lot of the time, I earned my four-year bachelor's degree while working full-time. All of my Mustangs are paid off and owned outright. The Tahoe is paid off. And I'd be buying this car outright, paying cash for it. And this is the payout. So I, I was able to enjoy stopping at this nice Taco Bell and get some food. And when you're in there, there's so many different people from all over the world that are crammed in there trying to get something to eat. And you look at their mannerisms. You look at how they come from different backgrounds and different cultures. And you look around and wonder, where do they get all their money? How are all these people living? They've saved up their money. They probably earn more money than I do. And it makes you feel a little bit lost, yeah, especially being out of, uh, out of town and being in some other place. You feel lost, too. You know. And Whenever I go to California, it does make me just a little bit nervous because I'm going out of my comfort zone. I'm going into what I consider a whole different part of the, the country. I was born in San Diego, but I, I didn't grow up there. And so it is like going back to where I was from, but it just doesn't feel like home. And so we ate there and then we got to traveling back on the road. And it, like I said, it was bumper to bumper. We were going 10 to 15 miles an hour from Nevada to California. It was just forever. It took hours and hours just to get to the next little town, which is where we decided we'd stop for a minute, which is Barstow. And so we got to Barstow and we stopped at this Carl's Jr. Now stopping at this Carl's Jr. in Barstow seems to be kind of a new tradition that my family and I have made. We don't go to California a whole lot. We've gone to Disneyland. We went to go get a O2 True Blue GT that needed a, an engine. Um, you know, a couple of times we've passed through here, and we always stop at this Carl's Jr. in Barstow. So we're just kind of making that a uh, tradition. We stopped here again when we went on a cruise to Ensenada. But anyway, I really like this Carl's Jr., and it seems like it's kind of a good uh, place to stop before you get into too much of the desert and and things and so anyway we went into that Carl's Jr. and of course it was at nighttime these pictures are of the daytime but this was all still the same night um, and the traffic was terrible it was real slow and we went in there and we ate again and it was just fun it was nice to be able to stop in and buy some more food and be with the family and and just try to enjoy the trip some more and so we're on the road again and there is a ginormous descent down into California right here and this uh, big descent, it's a ginormous hill. When you go down, you can just see the whole terrain just going down. It doesn't look like it in, in this picture as much, but it really drops down here. And you're almost afraid you're going to lose your brakes and not be able to stop because it's just so long and so far down. But this is, a, this is a part that I always remember, going down into California is how I remember it. And at this point, um, the traffic was going a little bit faster. Things were getting a little bit better. 
But um, it was fun at this time to talk with my mom and talk about our family heritage. When you're younger, you don't really care about those things, but as you get older, you do wonder about your past and you wonder about your ancestors, and it is fun to hear these stories. And especially as I travel through these parts of the country, it's fun to know all the stories of my ancestors and what they went through. Um, she had told me a lot of uh, my family had settled San Bernardino, the whole valley area, and that um, they had one of the first motorized cars which was kind of like a truck and they used it to go up into the hills and deliver freight and things. My great grandfather was director of film photography at Walt Disney Corporation, so you know, there's a lot of heritage there. And my dad had moved from Pennsylvania but basically grew up in Los Angeles. And so it's just real fun to go there and like I said I was kind of nervous this whole time and out of my comfort zone going all the way out to California. So it was fun to to have that history to rely on and know that, you know, this is where my roots come from. This is a really good place and, you know, there's nothing to be afraid of. You know, this is somewhere where your family's been for generations. And so we traveled through the night. Again, the traffic got bad again. There are a lot of people who live in Nevada, live in Vegas, and they commute to California for the better, higher paying jobs back and forth. It's just terrible. It's a, it's a big mess. And this was also a holiday-ish weekend. This was after Christmas, like I had said. And so this was a time where there was a lot of people on the road. And it was just a lot of traffic. And you worry you're going to get a flat tire or something's going to happen. You're going to be stranded amongst all these people trying to get around you. But eventually, we made it to Corona, California, to the Aries Hotel, or Aries Hotel, however you pronounce it. And so this is the hotel. My wife had done a great job booking a hotel, finding a good place of where it can be close to where we were going, getting a good price, all that stuff. You know, it's really good of her to do that for us. When we go traveling, she takes pride in being the navigator. She shows us where to go. And so I decided that I'd go in with my mom and get the room all figured out um, and that my wife would stay in the car with the kids. It was cold outside, everything. So we went in there. And so it was a really nice lobby. There was a fireplace with a nice fire going there, and it was warm inside, and it was nice. Um, but they were having trouble with the Wi-Fi, and they couldn't get on to find the room that we had uh, set up and everything. And so it took like half an hour for them to figure out how to get us our room. And it was really late already, and we'd been on the road for a long time, so it was kind of stressful. But I remember my mom looking over and She's good about just enjoying anything and trying to find the good in things. And she said, oh, look at that guitar over there on the wall. And so we went over and looked at this guitar. And it was, it was special for some reason. I don't remember why. But I know my little sister likes electric guitars. And so we took a picture to send to her and everything. But it's funny. You can see it in the lobby there in the picture. And so this is what the hotel looked like on the ad from the outside, you know, beautiful hotel with indoor entrances and everything, which is important to a lot of people. I know I feel a little safer when you're inside a hotel that has the inside entrances. But when we got there, we noticed they had two hotels right next to each other. And if you look to the left there, that was the other part of their same franchise. And so we actually had the outside entrance like here on the left. Um, but we were on the inside of this courtyard and there was a gate around it, so it did seem pretty safe. And the hotel room was really nice. This is what it looked like inside. It had this funny granite island kind of in the middle of the room, which is interesting. Although I was kind of nervous thinking about how now we're in this place that I don't really know where we are. I've got over $20,000 in an envelope with me. Maybe I should have brought something with me to um, defend myself, if you know what I mean. In case someone were to break in, they could have gotten away with a lot of money, you know, if they would have robbed us right then. But I had a hard time sleeping. I was really excited, really nervous, everything. And so we decided that uh, the next morning it would probably be best if my wife just stayed there with the kids. And my mom and I took the Tahoe and drove it over to go get the Cobra, take it for a test drive, everything, and bring it back. Especially since she grew up in Southern California and she knew her way around. And so I got up early with my mom and we went over to the breakfast which was across into the other hotel building and I remember not even wanting to eat. I was just excited and wanted to go get the car, I was nervous and so I didn't even want to eat breakfast but I knew I was going to have to have a good breakfast for the day so I said go ahead. I made myself sit down and eat breakfast 
and just do it as quickly as I felt comfortable and then get on the road. I remember walking across that upper level there by all the doors for the hotel rooms, leaving our room and going and feeling the cool California breeze, an ocean breeze just coming right in. It really was a fun experience. And you get feelings that you remember like this. And this is really fun to talk about and remember all these feelings. So we finally started to get close. We're in Laguna Hills and we get towards the uh, opening of the subdivision where we're going to be finding the car. And I got real excited. Every time I've got a car like this, my blue mock, my orange Cobra, I remember getting close and wondering, okay, what is the first thing I'm going to see when I see the car? How is it going to be parked? Is it going to be backed in? Is it going to be parked forward? Is it still in the garage? Is he pulled it out of the garage? I was just getting all excited to see this car. And we came around the corner, and there it was. I was so excited to see a Torch Red 03 10th Anniversary Terminator Cobra sitting right there. In this whole mess of a ginormous city, there is this one car that I'm after, it's parked there, it's waiting for me, and it's going to be mine. I was so excited to see the car, and it looks so good. I love seeing it with those uh, 10th anniversary wheels on it. They're that anthracite color, just like the bullet wheels with the polished lip, and it gave the car a really good look uh, in the shade there with the dark wheel. And I remember coming around the corner and seeing it and just thinking, oh my gosh, there it is. I can't believe this guy is going to sell this car. I can't believe he's getting rid of this. He had owned this car since 2005. So man, this guy's had this car for a really long time. But we walked around the car. It was beautiful. It was everything that you could expect. Of course, there's going to be a couple little dings and scratches that you didn't know about. But overall, such a rare, beautiful car. Something that you just don't see every day. The whole time you're driving through California, you don't see another one, you know. It is it is just awesome. I was so excited to see this car, and it was beautiful. The day was perfect. I just wanted to get in and go for a ride. I looked the car over. My mom took this picture of me and the owner of the car looking over it, checking everything out. I like this picture because it's real candid. It just shows me looking at the Cobra, doing my thing. So we um, decided that we could go for a test drive, go put some uh, sea foam in the tank because I wanted to clear out the fuel system it has been sitting for a long time and just go drive the car. So we took it for a ride and the car drove great. Of course, a little clutch chatter. It has a brand new clutch and a Fidanza flywheel and things that need to be broken in, but nothing major. Um, and I remember saying, let's go find an auto zone or something to get some uh, sea foam to put in the tank. And he told me where one was, and we got there, and I was ex I was so surprised to find out it was the exact auto zone that I stopped at when I bought that O2 True Blue GT with the bad engine. I had stopped at that auto zone years ago to buy a new pin for the receiver for the tow receiver on that truck because it had a bolt instead of an actual pin, and I wanted to be safe towing it out of that huge hill out of California, and so. Um, it was the same auto zone. It was fun to be there. You know, we went in, I bought the stuff, and at that point, you know, if I'm buying this for the car, you know I'm going to take it home with me. So we went back to his house. We went inside. We started talking about the money and the title and everything, and we did all the paperwork. And, you know, I was like, here's a stack of, you know, over $20,000 in, you know, cash. Here you go. I told you I was a cash buyer. And we were sitting there doing all the paperwork, talking about my Instagram that has 10,000 followers and all the cars I've had, the Orange Terminator, the Bullet, the Mach 1s, all my GTs, everything. And, and he told me about the cars he had. And we were sitting there talking and I said, look, I don't want to sound arrogant when I say this, but I want you to know that I think I'm the absolute best buyer you could possibly have for this car. I don't think this car could have ever gone to a better home than the one that I'm going to give it. And I don't think anybody will ever appreciate this car like I will. And so I was really happy to hand over that dirty money and take this beautiful Torch Red Terminator Cobra in exchange. So if you look in the garage there, he had a Mongusto, which is a uh, mongoose in a different language, but it's kind of like a, uh, a Pantera. And so he wanted to restore that car. He said he's selling the Cobra so he can put some money into it, have something a little bit special. And he talked about how California is getting real hard and they're really cracking down on sports cars and things with the emissions and all that kind of stuff. So he just was ready to get rid of the Cobra. 
And so we talked for a little while, and then uh, we exchanged money and title and everything, and I got in the car, and I took a picture of the mileage as soon as I could remember, because that's something I always want to do right when I buy the car. I always forget that. So I took a picture of the mileage, and then we got on our way. So my mom drove the Tahoe, and I took the Cobra, and we started to head back, and I remember getting onto this stretch of the freeway and driving through and having to, you know, get on the on-ramp and hit it and cut into traffic and get all over the place. And I thought, man, this car, I'm surprised it has never been wrecked after living in this kind of situation with cars everywhere and chaos and everything. And I remember just zipping through and somebody in like a BMW came up and wanted to play and, and stuff. But I was really focused on not getting a ticket. I wasn't going to race anybody. I was going to make sure that I got the car home and got gauges on it and everything before I was hard on it. So just to make sure the tune was right, make sure everything's good. But I remember this section of the freeway and cutting through and just looking around and being like, man, this car is in the middle of this mess of cars and buildings and freeways and just people. And there's so much it's concentrated in this little area. And here I am in the red Terminator Cobra, my favorite car out of all the cars around here. I'm excited to have found it. I have it. I'm taking it back. And I just started going through the hills. The car drove great. I remembered ascending into the hills on a different toll road highway, looking down and seeing that massive valley floor and the ocean side and everything and feel like I'm taking this Cobra and I'm pulling it up out of that big monstrosity. I'm pulling it out of there. I'm going to take it home to a nice little town in Utah that has lots of back roads, good driving, beautiful scenery. Not that California is bad, but I prefer Utah. I really love where I live. And I was excited to grab this car and now I'm just going to take it out of here and take it home where it's quiet and where I can enjoy it and it can be with all my other Mustangs. So here are some of the scenic driving through California, going back to Corona, just through the hills. The pictures don't do it justice. It's a really nice drive and it's fun. Wide roads, of course these are toll roads so they're not used as much. And so I made it back to the hotel. I parked next to this handicapped spot. I thought that was a pretty safe place for the car originally. Got out, looked over the car a little bit more, took some pictures. I was just excited to take in this moment. There's a nice freeway in the background there, palm trees everywhere, beautiful place. It was fun to have the car there and look it over, open the door, see the red seats and the red door poles. I had both sets of keys to the car, which is rare when you buy a used car. I was thrilled to find the 10th anniversary floor mats were still in the car. That was something that the other 10th anniversary cars that I had looked at didn't have anymore or their original wheels, a lot of things like that. This car had basically everything I was looking for, especially you no know, drill holes in the front bumper, you know, all the criteria I was looking for. So this was really fun. I decided um, that I'd uh, get the kids ready and get ready to go. I didn't really want to leave the car there, so I moved it over here by this dumpster. This was an uh, even more safe place, I thought. I was really, really cautious and making sure that I, I had the car somewhere safe. Although, I was a little bit scared because I go in to help get the suitcases and get things packed up. And the whole time I knew that the car was out there, that I had the title in the glove box. I had left it out there. Anybody could have just walked off with the car and had a signed title. It was just real real nerve-wracking and I just was like let's go let's go let's go you know so I go out and, and look at the car my wife finished getting the kids ready and and stuff but boy the car looked good and it was so fun to walk out to it and see it parked there everything that I had wanted for a long time it looked really good even in the shade I wanted to take a lot of pictures of it but the pictures didn't come out as good you know they looked dark and everything and I was just really excited to have it there so I decided you know what I'm going to I'm going to take the two oldest boys with me. They can ride in the back. They wanted to go for a ride and, and we'll just make our way home that way. My mom and my wife could take the Tahoe with the baby and I take the two older boys in the back seat and we'd go for a ride and we'd make our way home. So we went over right to this Mobile One gas station right next to the hotel. I remember seeing that V6 Mustang over there. Whoever owned it worked at this gas station. It was right by the hotel. I remembered seeing it as I went by and thinking, I can't wait to be back with my Cobra. It's a good example of what an average New Edge Mustang would look like these days. And uh, filled up with gas, make sure we were topped off and ready to go. 
and we started back onto the highway and you can see the traffic was terrible again in these pictures it actually looks like you're moving but you're barely crawling it was just bumper to bumper everywhere I just was nervous someone was gonna whack into the back of the car I, I wanted to get the car out of there I want to go home um, but I also wanted to enjoy the trip and my wife and my mom had a good idea to go visit the Redlands Temple for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It was nearby. It's something that we would like to see. You know, we're members of that church and we're extremely happy and we'd love to go see it. And so we took a little detour and we drove over. There's this silver GT in front of me and I'm like, there's the GT. I respect and like that GT. I even had an 01 silver GT at one time and... I knew it wasn't the same car because of a few things. And my car was even sold to somebody who lived in California. But anyway, I'm in the Cobra. I'm excited. So here we are at the uh, Redlands Temple parking lot. I got out and took some more pictures of the car. It was fun. I had, you know, really haven't even seen the car too much yet besides just getting it. And there's the car parked way back in the back of the parking lot. The temple grounds are beautiful. We walked around. We enjoyed a little bit of fresh air and some time. We let the kids play on the grass and just enjoy being at this beautiful temple and just making a family memory here. It was fun to visit. It was fun to be there together. My dad had spent some time in the area when he was in the Air Force at Redlands Air Force Base. And so it was just real fun to be in that part of California and enjoy a beautiful day, new car, be excited, and uh, do family stuff as well. So we were back on the road, and of course, I was concerned about the traffic, and this part of California, this is the hill that we went down, and now we're going back up this hill, big, huge ascent, and I was worried about having to make it all the way up this hill again, and when we were coming down this hill, well, you could see the traffic was backed up for everybody that was coming back up this hill and so now here we were and all that coming up the hill I knew it was gonna be like this and it was real real slow you know it was, the clutch was getting hot just stop and go stop and go stop and go but it was nice to be in a low mile Cobra that I know runs great and everything would be fine with it and it was I reached down and flipped the toggle switch under the dash for the uh, extra fans there's some electric fans he had added with a uh, dual core heat exchanger and so that kept the car cool and all this driving and stop and go traffic and everything and, but you see there's our Tahoe ahead of us and we're headed up the hill and it was just it was a fun experience uh, a lot of times I look back and I kind of wish that I was there again even though I was so excited to get home and, and get the car out of there it is a fun experience and I, I look back to these memories and that's part of the reason I wanted to make this video was to reminisce and go back through all of this. So we made our way back towards Barstow. Here we are getting into Barstow again and uh, we decided to go eat at In-N-Out Burger. Even though we have one here in town where we live, we still decided we wanted to go there. We like it. It's really yummy. and. Uh, we pulled in there and realized that the line was just out the door. There were people wrapped around the building, and uh, there was a Carl's Jr. across the street, so this is a different part of Barstow. There was another Carl's Jr., so we decided to go walk across the street, leave the cars there. We were parked with a Tahoe in front and the Cobra behind it in a long parking lane. It was like for a truck and trailer. But people were double parking there, so we decided to park there like that too. And I remember just taking more pictures of the car and looking at it and seeing those bright red, Colorado red seat inserts and thinking, man, look at this torch red 10th anniversary Cobra. I'm so excited to have it. It looks so good. I just couldn't stop taking pictures of it. And so we walked across the street and ate at the Carl's Jr. And then we went over and got gas at this little gas station, and then we were back on the road. So we did pull off at one point. The boys had to go to the bathroom. We had to take a little break and stuff. And I went down this little frontage road and turned around and had the car parked there. I was able to get out, take some pictures with that highway in the background zipping by. And it was just fun to get out and see the car, listen to it idle, just taking the whole experience of driving this car home, trying to take it slow and enjoy. And uh, speaking of slow, it was a very long trip home. It was just like it was driving out there, stop and go traffic almost the whole way from California to Nevada to, you know, by Vegas. Lots of, uh, lots of people commuting and the holiday rush and everything and bottlenecking. And you could see the frontage road 
next to the freeway. People were getting off and going down that, and they were going twice as fast as we were on the freeway. I remember getting stuck behind this bus and just following him for miles and miles at 10 miles an hour. I was just like, oh man, this is going to take forever. I'm burning up gas and my wife's in the Tahoe behind us burning up gas and everything. And so it was a really long trip. But we did get to this one part of the road, which I always remember every time I go through the trip. And it's these big power lines that go across the highway. It's very distinct. And in the picture, it doesn't really do it justice. But these things are massive, and it's a point that I always remember going under each way. And so it was fun to go under there and be taking the car home. And I was even thinking on the way out there, I can't wait till we're coming back with the Cobra. When, we're, when we make it back to these power lines, that'll be a good time because I'll know I'll have the car and I'll be on my way home. But here's some more little highway shots just driving through. I made sure to take a picture of the gauges and the speedometer. You can see I'm going like 30 miles an hour if I'm lucky. And people merging onto the freeway just to make it even worse. But we're all just trying to do the same thing and get home. But eventually after a lot of driving and a lot of desert highway driving, which I like, it was a fun trip. We were finally making our way back and it took us about 10 hours to get from Laguna Hills back to Las Vegas and usually it would take like half that it would be like a five hour drive from there but 10 hours later we're finally making it back into Las Vegas at night we pulled into a gas station by the speedway this is right by the racetrack it's always fun to go there this is where I would fill up when I'd be done racing to drive home so it was kind of a special place to be in the background there, past the Tahoe, past all those buildings is where a lot of street racing goes on in Vegas. I've made other videos about that. So it was nice just to stop for a minute, take a break again, but now we're in Vegas. We're on the home stretch. It's only a couple hours home from here. And I made sure to uh, get a picture of the gauges again because here the car had rolled 43,000 miles. I was keeping an eye on it, but I didn't have a safe place to take the picture. So here we are, 43 thousand seven point eight miles and back onto the freeway in Vegas and back to Utah and here we are I decided to stop and take pictures of my Cobra at the local Ford dealership I like going here with all my cars and taking pictures my wife had to go drop off my mom and go take uh, her back and stuff so I was just killing some time before we drive home from there together it's an, it was another you know 15 minutes home from there so so I went over to the Mercedes dealership. They have really good lighting over there. I took some pictures of the car. And they had some used cars for sale there too. There's a uh, red 2016 Coyote back there that I really like. I wanted to go park next to it compared to the reds. And then I went over to Danny Johnson's and found my plaque that I had. I had it saved over at his house. And I had bought this extra 10th anniversary badge a long time ago before I'd even know that I would buy the car. So I bucket washed the car, cleaned it up real nice, clay bar wax, everything, got the car cleaned up um, from the trip home. It's real nice just looking over the car in detail now that it's home and it's in my garage and everything. Looking over the beautiful interior, the steering wheel, the, which on the 10th anniversary Cobras is an FR500 style wheel. It has the hand grips up there with the carbon fiber leather print. And I'll tell you what, originally I didn't like that steering wheel. I planned on taking that steering wheel off when I got the car and putting it away because obviously it should stay with the car and it's a, it's a very expensive piece and putting another stock Terminator steering wheel I have which the Terminator wheels are double leather wrapped they are different than the GTs and I thought about just putting that away but once I held that steering wheel for the first time it is just the perfect diameter it feels really good in your hands it changed my mind I really like it Looking over the car some more, I was pleased to find out that it still had the special windshield wipers with the little blade on them. Those were made to keep the wipers down at high speeds. I parked the Cobra in with the Competition Orange in the other garage and the Bullet at the time when I still owned it. And so it was fun to get these cars together and have red and orange together. And speaking of getting the cars together, I pulled them all out for a photo shoot and this was kind of like a car and driver style photo shoot where they have all the cars just kind of scattered and the 10th anniversary being a really key piece to that collection. So I really enjoyed putting the cars together and having them and seeing them together in the garage. So from here on out, it was a lot of just enjoying the car. 
I've been taking it real easy with this car so far. I haven't been beating on it. I haven't been racing it. haven't been doing hardly anything with it besides just taking it out on nice drives and enjoying being here in Utah. I had mentioned how in California it seemed like everything was so hectic and there were people everywhere and cars and traffic and I wanted to get the car home here to my place. This is my element. These are the quiet back roads. A lot of them are nice and new roads. Uh, the city is really nice here and there's lots of beautiful places to go. This is one of my favorite drives back here. Uh, I took the Cobra around this uh, back road drive which was like a 30 minute drive. I wasn't anticipating it but the highway got shut down and I could have waded through the traffic or tried to come back through the traffic but I decided to go ahead and take the scenic route on on this drive home that I was on and so here I am going through these beautiful back roads and this is where I just love having the car. I'm very happy to enjoy the car out here and you know, this is one of my favorite pictures with the moon in the background up, up high. It's turning uh, dark, turning into nighttime, and just being out alone and enjoying some nice drives in the desert. So, this is the story of my 10th anniversary Cobra. I'm excited to have it. It's everything that I was looking for. I plan to do some more things with the car in the future, but for now, it's just trying to enjoy it. Um, something I should mention too is the car is on coilovers. That was something that I didn't really know. I I probably saw it in the listing, but I didn't think twice about it. So the car is lower. It's on coilovers. It has some suspension stuff done to it. My other walk around video talks a little bit about that. But this is the story of getting my Cobra, and I'm really excited to have it. And I just wanted to share this. I've been making a lot of stories about other cars, and I've been saving my personal cars for certain times and I wanted to go ahead and make this before I forgot all the details about getting the car. So this is the story of how I got my car and I'm just really excited to have it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already on here. Like the video and that will recommend it to other people. And I hope you enjoyed this story.